Kia ora YouTubers, my name is Dan and this video here is one of the free ones that I give away as part of my larger course. So if you are keen and you do enjoy it, uh, check out there'll be a link in the description. Uh, but for now, let's uh, go off and look at the free stuff. Hi, my name is Dan and in this video we're going to look at adding rows and columns. Now, what we need to do now is we've added our containers fluid. Okay, those are the ones that stretch the edges. Now we need to add our internal containers and split those containers up into little boxes we can use for text. So in terms of our Photoshop mockup, um, we wanna bring in a container that fits inside of here, okay, and allows us to put this content, uh, the title here and this text inside of it, okay? So let's do that. Let's make sure that we've got our top box selected, okay, band hero, let's go to insert, and let's put this one called container. Now. This is one, have a guess. What do you, which one should it be? Before, after, wrap, or nest? If you said nest, you're correct. Okay, so I've got um, this hero band selected, and I want to nest it means I want to put it inside. Okay, and you'll see I've got a nice little fixed width inside of here that is inside my um, hero band. Great. So now, what goes inside this? I could start sticking content in here, but you're not meant to. Containers just meant to be this wrapper around the outside. It's meant to hold these things, okay? Which is a row and a column. So you need a row and a column. And um, so in our case, we're just gonna need one, okay? We're gonna have this uh, one row and one column. So a column goes inside of a row. Let me have a little demo actually, make that a little bit more clearer. So I'm gonna insert, uh, I'm gonna make sure this container is selected. I'm gonna go uh, grid, row, and column. And it's gonna say, again, which one do we wanna do? I wanna put it inside the container, so I pick the nest. Okay, and I could have three columns. If I clicked okay, I'd have, oh, select the element, I'm gonna click nest. Okay, I'd have a row, which is the kind of outside. And then inside of that, there is three columns. Okay, but I'm gonna go to undo edit undo, because all I want is one row, one column. So I'm gonna click that, click nest, and I'm just gonna click one. It adds the row, because it needs it by itself, and it will add the column based on what you type in here. Great. So, um, great, I've got one row with a container inside of it, now I can start putting my text in. Now, if you've got to here, we've done something really wrong, okay? Um, and it's gonna cause us no problems at the moment, but a lot of problems later on, Oh, not a lot of problems, just a lot of time wasted uh, later on when we're working on our kind of say our tablet view and our mobile view. And um, the reason is, is if I select in here, you can see I've selected the column, there it is there, inside the row, which is inside my container, which is inside the fluid band, okay? So they're all nested inside each other, but the thing that's happened that um, we need to be careful of is, can you see this column here? It has a class apply called SM, which just means small. Okay, now small refers to a uh, uh, mobile phone, and we're gonna use that later on. So what it's done is it, it picks small because, can you see this little slider here? It's halfway through, this is what it considers small, this is what it calls extra small, and way out here where I can't see because of my screen size are medium and large. And I need to be dealing with large for my desktop. So, um, Dreamweaver by default, if you've got a small screen, you're gonna have problems. Now all it is, if you've built this site uh, for desktop view, and later on you try and go through and try to make it um, mobile, it means you're gonna to have to go through and change everything, do a find and change with from everything that's currently SM to LG, which is its large. So what we wanna do is we're gonna to go to undo. Okay, so we've got rid of, it's just a container now with no rows and columns. Now to get Dreamweaver to play ball, okay, we need to tell it we're working on the desktop view. Can you see here? I wanna say it's set to SM at the moment because of how wide my screen is. But if I say medium, it's gonna kinda of jump out. You can see it kinda of goes past the screen there. That's it's almost it. So I'm gonna click on large devices. And it just means when I click and add a row and a column, and I say it's gonna be nested, and it's gonna be one row, one column, you'll notice that it uses the class, if I click inside, of small. Now to get around this, what we need to do is we need to trick Dreamweaver into thinking it's a bigger size. Now you'd think you'd just go down here and pick large devices and it will display that, but when we add it, okay, so if I go to undo, I click inside here and I say add, even though I've set it to be large, okay, nice and big, and I go to add a grid in a row, nest it, and one, it still comes up as small. Okay, so hopefully this is a bug that gets worked out, so test yours, but what I do is I click inside, um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom out. Okay, so I hold Control minus or Command minus. Okay, and I just make sure that this is somewhere 
over here. Now another way to zoom is under view and you can use the long way um, under magnification and you can zoom in and out or you can see here's a few shortcuts or you can jump to 50%. So the way is to trick Dreamweaver. What we need to do is we need to zoom out a little bit so that we can see the rest of these media queries. So at the moment that's our mobile view. Okay, and that's the what's called XS, and there's another one called small. We want to get all the way out there to the desktop view. Now we're going to talk about media queries uh, in more detail later on, but when you're building your desktop view with me now, make sure that you can see the desktop view. So I'm going to hold uh, Command minus and click it once on a Mac, and that will zoom out a little bit. If you're on a PC, hold Control minus and zoom out, and then obviously Control. Um, plus or command plus will zoom in so minus and plus zooming in and out so I can now see this desktop view great it just means that when I'm viewing in this area I, it's great I can see my whole site but it also means that when I click inside here and I add my row and my grid and I click nest and, and I type in one hopefully now when I click inside can you see it's applied that large class now you could go through in code view and go and change it every time you hit small go and change it there's no big problem with that you could wait to the end of when you're doing your desktop view and go and do a fine change of them all in one big go it's up to you I like to just zoom out and make sure we're putting in this uh, LG which is our large one to start with because we're working on desktop so I've got one row you can see in there and inside of them a column and, and that's where my contents is gonna go. Now I'm just gonna add a bit of text to the inside of this one here. We're gonna do type in its own little video later on. So we're just gonna add some placeholder text. Now um, I can click inside here and I can type something, but it's actually quite tough. And what I should be able to do now is go into insert and insert a paragraph, okay, which is a bit of text that goes inside. But it's not working, it's all grayed out. If this ever happens to you, um, you just gotta make sure that you're on your source code version. Okay, not on your main CSS or any of these other ones. So if you're a source code and I click inside of here, now I can go to insert and go to paragraph. Again, I think this is a bug with Dreamweaver. Hopefully it gets fixed. Um, but so you know, um, I can click paragraph. I'm going to nest it because I want inside that column. And it's just added a bit of default text in here. What text am I going to add? I'll just add the real placeholder text there. This is, let's make this awesome. We're going to go through and style that properly later on. But let's just leave in here so we know that that's uh, this bit of uh, box here. Actually, let's add all of that text. So we can edit it by either double clicking it up here. Okay, and uh, you can see I can get it. You know you're editing text when it goes orange. Okay, and everything kind of else fades out in the background. Or I can edit it down here in code view. I'm going to edit it in live view. Okay, we're going to stick to kind of more of a visual way of doing things. So I'm going to double click in here. And actually, that's meant to be caps. Let's make things awesome. And I'm going to zoom in. So remember, command plus. Or control plus now I want to add some text after this I'm gonna put in the fake text that goes in underneath can you see it's just Lauren Upson uh, mixed up kind of Latin words just a placeholder until I get the copy written and you'll find it in your exercise files you can go to text open it up and there should be a bunch of text you can copy and paste I'm gonna paste that into Dreamweaver. so I'm gonna double click so it goes orange hit enter and paste and it's going to put my text in here we're not going to style it for the moment okay it's just going to hold there we're going to do some styling later on when we look at fonts next thing is let's add the container to this who we are and if you look at photoshop there is a container around the outside but there's also two columns okay one for my image and one for this text on the right here so let's add it let's click inside our um the band for who we are and we're going to go insert a container we're going to put it to be nesting inside of it and then we're going to add our grid and our row and this one's going to be nested inside but i'd like it to be two columns okay so we've got this outer row but inside of there we see here i've got two columns you can see and um, two columns and they've done it by dividing these columns remember we talked about our grid earlier on so there's an underlying 12 column grid so to split it into half there is six and six well you'll also notice that i did not zoom out so it's done a small six which is bad let's go to undo okay so edit undo edit undo until that goes away sometimes i need to click out edit undo there it's gone okay and i'm going to zoom out a little bit so i'm back to my large view so remember this edge here i can see the edge of my large desktop click my container insert a grid in a row nest it inside and put two columns great and hopefully now you'll see i've got a large that says six and this side it says six so it's in two halves now in terms of the layout it's slightly different i want to kind of do a smaller box on this side so it's not 50 50. so i'm just going to guess it for the moment i'm going to say you are about four 
you can see when I drag this right hand side here, it actually changes the class name. Now, if you were doing this in full code view, you could go through and just change it from six to four, do the same thing. But I guess Dreamweaver's perk is that you get to kind of do it in a more tactile, visual, WYSIWYG type of way. So there he goes, he's four, and you can see this one is still six, and there's a bit of a hole left over the side there. So what I want to do is actually, I want to make this, and I want there to be a bit of a buffer between these two. So maybe a column spacing between these two. And um, so to do this, if I do it to this right hand side here, if I drag it in, you'll see that it'll adjust how many columns it spans. On the opposite side, this one here doesn't do what you think it might. You think if I drag this side, it's gonna do the same, but it doesn't, watch what happens. If I drag it this way, so it's six at the moment. And if I drag this out, you see it says it's still sick, but it's actually added this extra class called offset one for the large document. Okay, so in my large view, it's gonna offset this one. Can you see this kind of like hazy line here? And um, it's a little hard on this smaller view, but you can see there's a little hazy line it means there's gonna be this uh, offset or this buffering on this side. So I want this little uh, buffering there and I wanna drag him so he is filling that gap there. You don't have to fill that gap, but I've got four on this side. I've got a buffer of one and I've got my seven and that will make up my complete grid of 12. Now the next bit I don't want you to follow along, I'm just in this example, say you do have just one uh, container fluid around the outside and you want to start dividing this internal uh, container up into lots of different parts. Um, so there are columns and rows. Now at the moment we've got one row and you can divide that up into columns. So if we need other rows underneath, you can do it by, and um, what you need to do is have the row selected. So if you've got a column selected like this, you need to go back up and click here in your parent row. Okay, and you get a nice little option over here that says add new row. Okay, or I could duplicate the one that I've currently got. But if I go to add new row, you'll see it here, it adds a new row with our two columns in there by default. And I could go through and style this. I could decide, okay, it's going to be, this next row is gonna be a same. Okay, so it's gonna be, it's gonna be four. This one here is gonna have an offset of one. And this one here is gonna have seven. Now let's say the last part of this particular website is four columns. So what I'm going to do is click the parent row. I'm going to say add a new row. And in here, I'm going to say, I'm going to make this one. So if I want four, I need to go three, three. And can you see, I've got a big hole over here now. So I've got two columns, but they're only three and three. So I need another two. So I can say, I've got the column selected and I can say duplicate and then I can duplicate it again. And I've got this very thin, Okay, which I can start filling with content, but I've got a website with these two, another row with another two, and then this last row with four columns. I'm gonna undo those. I just wanted to show you an example of how you go off and start building a site if you only had one fluid container, but we've got a few different ones. So this is this guy done now. We're gonna add some content in there, just really basic stuff so that we can, just so it fills it out a little bit. Let's copy and paste the text that goes into here. So I'm gonna go to my text document and there it is, who we are. Select all of this and paste it in there. So remember, if I click inside of it and this is grayed out, okay, it isn't in the moment, it probably means you've got your CSS selected. So make sure you're on source code, which is the HTML. Okay, and let's go to insert paragraph. And inside there, I want to nest it inside. Okay, and I'm going to select it all. Okay, it goes orange. I'm going to paste that in there and put a return in after this one. Click out, and I've got some basic text to work with. Now what I want to do is add it to this image here. Now, I've got the trouble of, if I wanna zoom in now, watch this, if I zoom in, okay, it snaps and it puts them above each other because I'm looking at it now at a smaller view, okay, a mobile view. So I'm gonna have to zoom out a little again. And you've got two options now. If you're working on a really tiny screen like I am at the moment doing this tutorial, um, you have to work out at this view or you can close, can you see this little double arrow here? You can close that and then zoom back in and see what you get to. You can see my one's still not big enough, to get out to the large view. So I'm gonna always have to zoom out when I'm working in Dreamweaver on this laptop at this resolution. Now, I normally work, I love my laptop, but I normally plug it into a bigger monitor so that it helps me work on these larger sizes. If you're working on a, I don't know, MacBook Air, like 11 inch, it's gonna to be tough work. You might wanna invest in a screen. It doesn't have to be expensive screen, just has to be white. Okay, so I'm gonna pop that back out so that you can follow along with me. And I'm just gonna have to be zoomed out a little bit and just look at everything a little bit tiny. But don't worry, we're gonna look at previewing consistently in a second, which means um, we can do stuff in Dreamweaver and see what it's gonna look like in the browser. So 
Um, you can see here, I've got my text. I want to add in here that little image. So I've got the image in. We're going to do images in more detail later on in the tutorial, but let's just do a basic one. So I'm going to select on it. I'm going to go to insert. I'm going to go to image and I'm going to nest it inside my column that I've got selected. And I want to go to my images. So I want you to go to your exercise files, mine on my desktop, Dreamweaver exercise files. I've got images and you'll see in here, I've got one called graphic old books. That's what's going to go in there. Let's click open and voila, it fits in here. Okay. So we've got our first little image. Now we're going to do images in more detail. Remember later on, but just while we're here, there's two things you need to do whenever you put an image in, we're going to do the alt text. Okay. And the alt text is to do with what Google sees because Google can see your graphic. Okay. It can see the file name of it. It can see graphic old book jpeg and that's reasonably descriptive but most people have images called i don't know img dot uh or img 4472 and that's not going to help google what google wants to see and what it wants for its users is a description and this is what here is in the alt text is for so i'm going to add alt text of uh old books in a library and what that's used for if i click enter now and um, if I click on the object here and I go to my code view and make sure I'm in source, you'll see that there's my image. Okay. There's a linking to this image here and here's my lovely alt text. Okay. And that is used by Google because Google can't see the image. It's a computer that goes wrong, crawls the code, but doesn't actually see this image like we can. And what it wants to do is a, it wants to know um, what it is so it can index it and know what your page is about. But what it really wants it for is for people that are visually impaired or blind. Okay. That, they have software on their computers that read them websites. So when the website gets read out to somebody, it's not just here is an image called IMG 1147. It's actually describing the image using your alt text. So it's really important to make sure you have this on all images because Google likes it as part of its rankings and you want to make sure you describe it route. Well, the easiest way to do is imagine you are describing it to somebody who can't see it. All right, let's go back to live view. Um, so alt text needs to go on. And the one other thing it needs to do when you're dealing with responsive bootstrap sites, you need to select on it and I'm going to zoom in a little bit just so that you can see it on the um, screen. And can you see this little sandwich here? Okay. This little three stripey lines. If I click on that, okay, you need to add this one that says make image responsive. Okay. What it does is without it, see so if I zoom out, can you see it doesn't actually fit in this box? He's too wide and he's the right height this box pushes out, but actually he doesn't fit within our four columns. Okay. He's a bit stretched out the side. So what we need to say is click on the image, click on this little stripey line, click make responsive and watch it. Can you see it actually fits in with the column size, which means it's going to push his boundaries out and it's going to cause loads of problems when you're trying to style this thing down for mobile or even our desktop there, it didn't fit. Okay. So make sure click on this little option here that says make image responsive. And uh, if you don't have that option or you've got an older version of Photoshop and all you really need to do is add the class called, I'm going to zoom in. It's called image hyphen responsive. So say we don't use this option here. Let's turn it off. Can you see it's just adding that class? You can manually type it in if you want. So clone that off, add it by going dot IMG responsive. It does the same job. Okay. Either which way you want to work. I'm going to zoom out again. And now it will stretch and contract for the different sizes later on. So make sure alt text and image responsive. All right, and that's an introduction to our rows and columns. We haven't styled any of the text. We're going to do that later on. But remember, you've always got to have at least a container. Doesn't matter if it's a, a fluid one or just a regular fixed width container. Then you need a row. And then inside that is always a column. Even if there's no splits into columns, you should have this column here because it's column that we apply that how many thing, uh, how many grids it spans. You can see at the moment it's spanning the whole 12. And this one here, seven. This one here, four. All right, that's it. Let's go into a production video where we add all the rows and columns to all the other pages. Hey there. Remember this video is a free extract from my course of more than 60 videos. So if you're serious about learning Dreamweaver, check out the link and below. If you like this free thing, give it a like, give it a share. I'd be really appreciative. Thanks. Hi, da da.